Apple just had their September event today, which will actually be yesterday since I'll be posting this up tomorrow for Two Minute Tuesday. Hey, what's going on? I'll be doing all right. My name's Matt. This is Dwyer Creatives, and today I want to talk about Apple's September event, September 9th, 2024, because I'm looking to upgrade my phone. Well, both myself and my wife are looking to upgrade our phone, and that would be to the iPhone 16. We're about four or five generations back. And we have tried Android, but it hasn't worked out for us. So we're still on the Apple side and in the Apple ecosystem. Let me know in the comments below whether you're on that Apple ecosystem or if you're on another one like Samsung or Pixel. Interest is seeing what everyone uses. This is Two Minute Tuesday. It is a little bit more material than for a Two Minute Tuesday, so I'm probably going to go past that. The images I'm going to use for this are from Apple's event. And I guess let's go ahead and put two minutes on that clock and get this started. The iPhone 16. Now they've been really pressing this Apple intelligence and they're going to be able to use the Apple intelligence because they have their new A18 chip. What they have done is increase the hardware acceleration and also made it a lot more efficient. This will help with the battery life, but also make it perform a lot better. They were advertising that it'll be able to run AAA games. Now I'd like to see how that works. They're also coming out with new colors, which I love to see this, that you have those options because maybe sticking with the plain same old phone, which is what I'll do is I'll stick with a basic boring color. Having the option to choose a color that pops is always nice. They'll have an action button, but also have a camera control button, which is something I'm interested in, which I'll get into when we get to the Pro model. For this, it'll be able to do spatial photos and videos, and will come with a 48 megapixel fusion camera with a two times telephoto. It's a new ultra wide with a macro. Now, the other thing that I really like about this is you're able to send messages via satellite. Now, I say that because if you ever off grid or off trail and you don't have a lot of signal or no signal, you're still able to send a message out for help if you need it, as long as you can see the sky. Let's move over to the i16 Pro. Now, again, they're pushing this Apple intelligence and I'd really like to see how that all plays out. To be able to run that, they're using their A18 Pro chip, which is gonna be more efficient, which is gonna help battery life and performance. This will also have the action button and of course the camera control button. Having a new type of kind of a smart shutter button would be really interesting for the phones because it is something that I kind of want it is easier access to be able to change things on the go, but will they be easy? Will it be hard? How sensitive will it be? Just some questions I have for that. The iPhone 16 Pro will be able to do 4K 20, uh, Pro Motion, and we'll have a five times telephoto on both the Pro and the Pro Max. The other interesting aspect is that they're running this studio quality mics on this, and, and this goes into something that I've been kind of watching and seeing other people mention this too is that Apple's really pushing for this idea that your phone is the only camera you ever need. You can take photos, you can take videos, and you don't need a camera anymore. The reason I find this really intriguing is because for someone like myself who literally picked up a camera to keep on himself so he always had a camera, how does this really work out? Is the iPhone going to be able to replace my Fujifilm X106? And I'm not 100% sure about that, but I suppose it could depending on what you really want for your camera. And the same thing for your video. For me, I haven't used the iPhone 15 with their video in the ProRes. In terms of video, I use a DJI Osmos Pocket 3 for most of my stuff and everyday stuff. And then for more professional stuff, I'll switch to my Canon R6 depending on what is needed. And I'm probably gonna be picking up another camera in the future, but we'll get to that later on, right? Like I said, you know, they're really pushing this idea that this phone will be the only camera you need. Going back like five, six, maybe seven years ago, on Instagram, I did a 365 challenge. So that would be one photo posted every day. For that challenge, majority of my photos and i would say probably at least 80 percent maybe 90 percent of those i did take with my iphone i had at that time which one was it not a hundred percent sure because i gotta look back into the metadata to see which one i was using but it's one of those things i was able to do that i got a ton of photos that i really liked and it's one of those things i didn't have to worry about bringing more gear with me that just becomes kind of cumbersome sometimes. And that's why I eventually switched to my Fujifilm X105 and now currently six, because it's a grab and go camera. Battery's pretty much always ready to go. You don't have to worry about lenses. For the iPhone Pro 16, will this be able to take that place of my Fujifilm X106? That's something that I'd be really interested in seeing. 
is whether this could take the spot of a dedicated camera. Now, I know I went past two minutes and a lot of this information was already out with the leaks, where they were pretty accurate with what we got. So let me know in the comment section whether you have an iPhone and you plan on upgrading, whether this isn't worth upgrading to for you. I'd be interested in knowing why and whether you think I should be upgrading from my 12 Pro Max, whether I should be upgrading from my 12 Pro Max to this 16 Pro Max. And this is where I'll end it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.